Okay, boys, round number one is in front of you. You may remove your blindfolds. Oh, oh chocolate sprinkles on toast. This is something that my four-year-old would have thought of. <laughs> this is something I thought Barry had thought of. Oi! <laughs> A global breakfast that is now synonymous with one country. It's got a wonderful story behind it. As always, dig in, have a taste, see what you think, and then I need you to guess which country. Five points if you get it spot on. If you both get it wrong, the closest takes one there's point. A, there's a surprise on the lady. There's got to be a surprise. <laughs> Bread, butter, and some chocolate sprinkles, which traditionally would be a nice kind of 30% solid chocolate. I mean, I'm going to be honest, there's nothing not to like. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bread, great. Butter, great. Chocolate, great. So this particular dish began about a hundred years ago, just over. And then, <laughs> it was slightly different. It was white, sugar-coated, aniseed flavoured sprinkles. However, one five-year-old child wrote to the factory and said, I think this would be better if it was chocolate and this five-year-old got his way. I love how simple this is. Yes, Barry, but remember the game. We've got to guess where in the world mm. this dish comes mm -hmm. from, and this isn't giving me anything. I've got something. I'm not going to say it's only eaten at breakfast time, but it is kind of typically eaten at breakfast time in this particular country. OK, boys, turn your boards around in three, two, one. Oh, they both start with the Greece? same four letters. Greenland. Greenland. Greece? Aniseed. The Greeks are famous for their like incredible meals. Never have I had sprinkles on bread. Yeah, but you've only had fermented shark from Greenland, so how have you got to bread and butter and <laughs> chocolate sprinkles? Okay, so you've both gone with a logic relating to this story that was the licorice. What if I told you this was called Harslug? <laughs> Bless you. Harslug. Harslug. It sounds, Harslug. sounds um, Scandinavian. It does sound Scandinavian. This is from the Netherlands. Ooh! <laughs> so the name itself almost translates to hailstorm because when they were white sprinkles, yeah, it would literally yeah. be Sandstorm. like hail. And then it turned into chocolate, but it still carries the same name. I can't Sorry. tell my kids about this breakfast because that's all they'll ever want. I don't know how popular it is and whether you'd find it in many cafes or out of the home or whether it's very much uh, an in-the-home kind of breakfast, mm -hmm. but it is very popular, as you can imagine, especially with kids. Now back to the distances, because neither of you were spot on. Far from it. One of you was 775 miles closer than the other, and that person was Jamie with Greece. Really? Yes, but how far actually away was I? 1,201 oh. miles. Oh, it's the wrong side of Europe, but pretty close. <laughs> Which means, Jamie, you take a point, and we move on to round two. Pow! Damn! Okay, boys, round number two. You know, I've just had a thought. What? Why don't we just have a cloche? He always has to put blindfolds on. Nice. Take your blindfolds off. Now. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> Green beans and red onion for breakfast. It smells very fishy as well. Right, straight away, we're in a very different part of the world, aren't we, Jamie? We are. Iceland. <laughs> Dig in, tell me what you're tasting, oh, you what you're experiencing. Got noodles. What have you got there, Baz? I've got very lemongrassy fish. Mmm. Mmm. I approach these dishes with caution, because I'm always a little bit nervous how spicy they're going to be. This is mild. Beautifully fragrant, with a lot of lemongrass, as you've identified. It has got some dried chilies in it. Oh, mate, this is, a, this is unbelievable. This is fantastic. They mushrooms as well. I'll be honest. Oh, oh. nicely done, <coughs> Jay. <What>? Wow. <laughs> I'll be honest, in that format, I think you would struggle to identify it, but it is banana blossom. Mm. Ah. It's less brothy, more creamy. So the broth has been thickened with two things. One, some either ground flour or crushed chickpeas, and two, toasted rice flour or toasted rice powder or ground mm -hmm. toasted rice. Mm -hmm. And then to add that, you've got your rice vermicelli noodles, you have got eggs, and you identified the fish, Barry. I can tell you it's catfish. Mm. Wow. Would you like to see a catfish? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's an ugly bugger, isn't it? It really is an ugly bugger. Wow. Bug. You don't see catfish often in the UK. Have you ever had catfish? I've had catfish in Kentucky. And the way they do it is they generally take 
large chunks or even whole <laughs> catfish and gently cook it in like a, a lemongrass and turmeric broth. And then they peel away the flesh and almost mash the fish into the soup as well. It's really Moorish. Again, not a breakfast I would usually go for, but one I wouldn't turn down. Yeah, that is a very unusual breakfast mm. to me. But it's absolutely delicious. Now, bearing in mind, this is traditionally a breakfast dish, but you also find it on kind of street hawker stands throughout the day. And it's almost become the unofficial national dish. Oh, God. Okay, boys, you've locked in your answers. Flip round the boards in three, two, one. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 Similar part of the world. Malaysia and Vietnam, what was your thinking? This sounds really basic, but it tasted Malaysian. That, that's not a bad shout. There are similarities to things like laksa. Yeah. Yes. Where you've got those similar flavourings, you've got the fish, you've got the egg, and you've got the noodle. Things like the lime. And when you said it was more become more like the national dish of this country, that's bigger than just breakfast. I steered away from like Singapore and Malaysia. Neither of you are quite right. It is instead from Myanmar. Ah. Largest landmass in Southeast Asia. Uh, you might previously have known it as Burma. Hasn't been formally called that since 1989. Mm -hmm. and it just shows my nose. I've literally never heard of that country before. What's interesting, although the country is no longer called Burma, we still talk about the Burmese language and the Burmese cuisine. Now it's technically the Republic of the region of Myanmar. This is so educational. It is. The dish itself is called Mahinga, and I think it was traditionally a dish of the people. Although it goes back a long way, there's no evidence of the dish in cookbooks which were written for royalty, i.e. it would have been passed through generation to generation, word of mouth, and therefore every family has a slightly different version. On to the mileage. One of you, 308 miles closer than the other. Jay takes the win. Oh, oh, you lucky blighter. Oh, Baz, despite the fact your answer is kind of closest border to border, we take the app and the centroids. Jay takes the win. Okay. Hey, rules are rules. <laughs> Fair dues. Jay, you have two points at the end of round two. We move into round three. Barry. Yes? It's our 13th birthday. We're teenagers and we could not have reached this historic milestone without you guys. Our parents, essentially. <laughs> Thanks. And to celebrate, um, we're doing some massive discounts. So go check them out now. All the information is downstairs. Offers end 10 a.m. Friday. So be quick. Can't wait for puberty. <sighs> Can't be bothered. Okay, boys, round number three. Blindfolds off. I, Whoa. Every time, this gets more ridiculous. I mean, it's not a full English, and therefore, it is a breakfast worth celebrating. What are you seeing? Oh, I'm seeing chilies, I'm seeing... What? Am I seeing tuna? Coconut? Lime? Flatbreads. What's this? Yeah, it's coconut. You're kind of eating the right way with your fingers, but oh, you're supposed yeah. to do it by tearing off the bread and using that as a kind of mop to kind of grab parts of it in between. Oh, it's bitter now. It's literally called a disc, but it is made with coconut. So mm. It's like a coconut naan, almost. And that's kind of how you do it, Jay. Yeah. Put the small bit over and use it to clump it up. You spotted the tuna. Oh. Mm. What are the flavours you're getting? I'm getting big chilli. Oh, lots Big of chili. lime. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. Lime zest. And um, big coconut. And then there's a herb, but I can't tell what the herb is. Chiffonade through it is curry leaf. Mmm. That is fresh, mm. zingy and spicy. Exciting food. Right. Ooh, I'm awake, go! Yeah. Pairs very nicely with black tea. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite a traditional drink with it. Now think about where it might come from. Think about the influences you're tasting, you're seeing, and where those ingredients might be. If you spoke the language, I could give you the name because it's very, very descriptive. The name, disc mas huni. The disc is the bread, mass is fish, and huni is coconut. I think I prefer that to the last one. And the last one was up here. Yeah, I know. Of all of it, it's the breads that are throwing me off. Everything here brings me to a part of the world. That bit takes me to another. Okay, boys, let's see what you got. Where did you go? Afghanistan. Yeah, I know. And Sri Lanka. Um, Sri Lanka. We're close than I thought. <laughs> um, Sri Lankan breads have had in the past. Yeah. But I didn't want to write Sri Lanka. I was trying to think of other countries that we haven't explored. But it was the, the fishy mound that completely threw me, because that was taking me more towards the Caribbean. 
Really? Because that, to me, was m far more like Pulse Sambal. Oh, like Sambal with my... Pulse Sambal and that oh, kind of mate, thing. But with tuna you've bloody it, done it, haven't you? The Pulse Sambal, which you remember you described as a roller coaster of yeah. Yeah. And well, here you're talking about a vibrant freshness. It is the curry it. Leaf, it is the chilli, yeah. it is the lime, it is the coconut, it is the flatbreads that push you in that direction. Yes. It's not the right answer. Ah, oh, yes! No! Wait, is Barry the right answer? No. Right. Oh. I mean, that would, that would have been punchy if it was. Barry is 1,533 miles away from Jamie, who is the closest. This is the Maldives. Oh, we've just oh, so, oh, You were just really? 611 miles away, oh, Jamie. Well, oh. unlucky. Think island. It is just off Sri Lanka. Yeah. 611 yeah, yeah. miles as the centroids take you. Uh, and it is full of all the fresh fish, but the chilli and everything else that goes along with it. It's two things, the naans and the flatbreads, and the tuna that are kind of synonymous with the island. Mm. So I thought, like, Sri Lanka, because of the, it, what it reminded me of, but I also thought maybe it was more mainland Indian, like, Goa, like, real southern. Ooh. Interestingly, it is sometimes made from salted or smoked tuna. It's not always the fresh stuff. And apparently, the Maldives is a common destination for things like honeymoons and a lot of tourism and travel. And the hotel breakfast would never serve this because they presumed that people wanted things more familiar. And it became more and more popular. And people were asking the hotels to put it, but now, pretty much everywhere you go, you can find it. That Amazing. is incredible. And the best thing about this format is I still have a chance. Jamie oh. has three points. Barry needs to get this one spot on to take the win. Okay, guys, last round. Blindfolds off. <sighs> Come on. Whoa, yes! I've got a name. I've got a name. I've got a name. Can you remember the name? No, I cannot remember the I name. I can remember a name, but I don't want to say it because then he'll hear it. Mouth it to me. Excellent. Cut into it and see if you think the same. Oh, you do it. It won't be the same. Chocolate. So you're going for the babka kind of vibes? Yeah. I think it's more meaty. Definitely more savoury. I thought it was a big Nutella ring. <laughs> okay, this, so you got filo pastry, pastry wrapped around a... Meat. It's a sausage, isn't it? It looks a bit like mince meat, you know, doesn't yeah. it? There's like this fruit in there. Cheers. Cheers. Fruit. Mmm. Mm. It's black pudding. In. It's got oats or some sort of grain. Very rich. Meaty flavour. Mm. What meat? It's the fattiness of pork. Mm. It's not pork. Oh. It's beef. Is it beef? Very fatty beef. Yeah. Min I mean, yeah. minced beef, yeah. but a, a, you know, a relatively high okay, fat percentage. But like a 20% mm. fat that you'd get yeah. on minced beef that isn't sold as lean. It has got onions in it. Now, you said like a barley or a grain or an oat mm. inside. It's none of those, but it is packed out with a starch of sorts. Potato? Yeah. Mm. To me, not the flavouring, but it's a it's a it's a pastry not dissimilar mm. to a Cornish pasty in the sense mm. that it's yeah. bulking out minced beef with potato and onions. Which is why it was giving you the black pudding sausage S, because it's mm. not yeah. just meat. There's a bit of spicing there's mm. some spice mm. in Peppery. there. What, what spicing? Caraway. Uh no. Right. So it's all spice. All a little spice. bit of paprika, salt and pepper. It's where you said dried fruit at one point and it has that kind of Spice you might associate with some chutneys. Yeah. Only because only it looks like the onions have gone a long way. Like, look, they look like the casings of raisins. Yeah, jammy. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Very naughty. Where in the world are you from? Now, for context, this kind of food is found across a few countries in the region, but we're looking at one specifically where this spicing comes from and this spelling comes from. We're not giving you the spelling. But also, Whilst there are a few different types, it is the capital of this particular country where there are bakeries that make just this. They just sell these and it's very much a, a grab and go pastry option in the morning. Have you got mm -hmm. a region in mind? Mm -hmm. You have. I'm confident my region. Ooh. But I think choosing the country will be tricky. So phyllo pastry. Coiled into a spread is minced beef with potato and onions, some nice seasonings, buttered, and then finished with sesame seeds. I've narrowed it down to a region. And then it's a lucky dip in it, really. It, yeah. Right, let's get this game done, because I want to taste it. Belarus Ooh, and Latvia. Same, same region. Yeah, yeah, different countries, though. Very much the same region. 
and the pair of you are just 124 miles apart. Neither oh. of you are spot on. Oh, that ruins the game, doesn't it? So this dish is called burek. <laughs> of course it is. Why do I know burek? Popular around the Balkans. Yeah. And specifically popular in the old town capital, Sarajevo. Yep, it's Bosnia and Herzegovina, oh, okay. and it is Borek. So again, during the, the last few hundred years, it was has adapted a few times, and that's when they kind of turned it into the spiral shape, but it is always made with ingredients that they can easily and readily get hold of that are relatively cheap. You were only 124 miles apart, and Barry, you were closest. Yay! <laughs> 822 miles away. Oh. But today, that means, Jamie, you take the win 3-1 in our global breakfasts. Well yes. Done. Well done. I find it astonishing that we're still eating dishes that we've never had before. Never heard of before. Well, in some countries you've never heard of before. I, it surprises me. <laughs> <laughs> Less of for us all, but you guys, over to you. Comment down below, were any of those dishes new to you? And what other global breakfasts should we be trying?